My name is Carolyn Maslumi. I'm an independent curator, artist, and director of the Women of Color Quilters Network. Over 35 years ago in my regular job, I traveled a lot. I, I was an engineer and I would take in art shows and I saw quilts at galleries selling at that time for enormous prices. And I wondered if those prices were trickling down to the makers of those quilts. Anyway, out of curiosity, I put an ad in a national quilt magazine asking African-American quilt makers to contact me. As a result, nine quilt makers from across the country, black quilt makers contacted me. And the one commonality that we had besides quilting was that we thought we were just the last black quilters in the United States. And that was the beginning of the Women of Color Quilters Network. The objective of that organization at that time was to educate African-American quilt makers, not only about the cultural significance of their work, but the monetary value as well. We've shown across the United States and around the world um, at museums. And it's really been a privilege to document this work. Most of the work that the network members make, as well as myself, as well as the quilts I collect are narrative uh, quilts. Quilts are like cultural documents. Each quilt that's made tells a story. It doesn't matter really what the type. The maker had something in mind when she or he started to make that quilt. So when you look, especially at the narrative quilts, they give you a glimpse into our nation's history, our community's history, the history of the person that makes the quilt. So quilts are very, very important because they really take in the timber of the times for our country future and past. We as human beings have a lifelong affair with the cloth. Cloth is the first thing we're swathed in at birth. It's the last thing that touches our body upon our death. So you can't, you can't get away from the cloth. So the quilts that I make and the quilts that I deal with mostly from the network deal with social justice issues. And I find it a very easy way to tell the most difficult stories of our culture within a quilt. Because most people are familiar with quilts and when they think about quilts, they think about heart, home, safety and security. So it's an easy way to tell difficult stories with an article that one is so familiar with. When African people came to this country, they brought with them already needle skills. There's a history of needlework from day one, from the time you stepped off the ship uh, to present day. I won the, the National Heritage Award from the National Endowment for the Arts. 20 years before receiving that award, I made a quilt. And it was a narrative quilt about the Selma to Montgomery March for civil rights. And I will never forget as a young person watching television and seeing the report of that march as these marchers tried to cross the Pettus Bridge. They were beaten back by the state troopers and the police in such a violent manner. And I distinctly remember one man on the ground getting chewed up by the dogs and hit with this, 
with a billy club by a state trooper. And I was young then. I didn't know who that man was, but it was John Lewis. I found out as an adult that it was John Lewis. Well, when I received the National Heritage Award, I, and I knew I was going to Washington, I contacted Congressman Lewis's office and asked if I could meet him because I always wanted to get in that quilt. And I always said as a younger person, if I ever saw it, I would give him that quilt. And I was so pleased and humbled. I heard back from his secretary weeks after, and he said, when you come to Washington to receive that award, I will see you. And um, I was able to give him that quilt during that visit. So coupled with receiving the National Heritage Award and at the same time being able to meet Congressman John Lewis, it was truly the highlight of, one of the highlights of my life. For the quadricentennial anniversary, the 400th year anniversary of the first landing of Africans in this country in 1619, I curated an exhibition called And Still We Rise, Race, Culture, and Visual Conversations, where I trace that history from 1619 to present day. And it was a timeline of quilts. And it was a huge show, over 100 quilts that traveled the country for almost five years. A very important show with a, a wonderful catalog. And that show made a difference because so many people outside of African-American culture don't, they know nothing about our culture. And back in the day when I was going to school, we learned only the history of white folks. I often, I think all the time, if people from outside of the uh, culture knew the contributions of African-Americans, all the trials and tribulations that they've been through, it makes a difference. It makes a difference when people know you. And that's what the show, uh, And Still We Rise, was about. And for the exhibition, And Still We Rise, along its travels, I, I, I received this letter from a viewer. I was literally blown away by the beauty, ingenuity, artistic ability, and stories these quilts had to tell. As a white American, I was deeply embarrassed that I was so very ignorant of African-American history and the huge part it has played in the history of our country. I am ashamed that such a large and important part of our country's history has been left out of our education. When I get letters like that, I know, I know that I've done my job as curator and the artists have done their job as artists. That's one of the objectives for me of creating art, to impact the human spirit, to try and make a difference for the things that we believe in. We believe in freedom. We believe in fairness. We believe in equity. All of these things, our humanity, we show in these quilts. So when someone sees that and gets it, then everything is good. It makes a difference.